a chilly um, evening here at the Safari Sevens 2023. Yeah, it is chilly. It is cold. Um, because we already said, clearly, we have set the tone. This is going to be an argument. <laughs> we are here in a muddy pitch that Kolo ironically used to discharge on the four, but now RFU EA grounds is also seeming to At be a little... we don't mop our grounds with well, 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 well. We, we, we don't stop. We don't stop. You just start games. out of... We, we just start out of... Yes. 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 Can you let me have my moment? No. My <laughs> intro? You can't go to Madi Girls. El Stadio de Sopunongo Crot Crash. Anyway, the 5-7 men's champions are the Shuja. Of course. And the women, of course, are the Lady Cranes. Uh, of course, also. Uh, congratulations to Lady Cranes. Yes. But of course, I'm here. We are doing a review of uh, the entire uh, uh, tournament. We did a mini review yesterday, but this one, we want to really get uh, dive deep in a couple of things. Myself, Ruben Kihumuro, Anesta Karebi Runji, Kolona Viso, and Edwin Wawide. Edwin, let me then first start with you. Two days of this experience. In short, in summary, how has it been for you? Yeah, it's been amazing. First time to be here at Mongrod for someone who has watched rugby for a long time. Really? This is my first really? time. Really? So, what are you doing at Kings Park? Kings Park. Watching cricket. No, he's saying <laughs> outside. <laughs> to, to come and watch at this at this, at this this pitch has been something very amazing mm. for me to get an experience of Harley Quinn's rugby and then embracing Safari Sevens. Something that has been on the list for rugby tours for quite some time uh, has been uh, something uh, important in my life. So, I have a tick there. Mm. I hope that 2023, somebody mm. seven hours there. Yeah. Alex, you've been busy. You've been really, really busy cooking this weekend in the commentary box. Speaking a lot of so, English. So, a lot of English. I don't know if you're going to have any English for the next week. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. just tell us about Safari Sevens from your point of view. Of course, for me, Safari Sevens is a personal tournament for me. Mm. My first tournament as a journalist was here at the Safari Sevens in 2019. Okay. And I missed in page 21, but I'm back. Okay, that's great. So yeah, I was very excited to be here four years as a journalist. It's been uh, out of the wildest dreams that yeah. I could possibly have. But and I was privileged that I got the opportunity to be the voice to some of the exciting moments in today's game. So I had a blast. Mm. Came with my favorite shoes. Didn't get the opportunity to put them on because of the conditions, as you can see. <laughs> it's so strange that. Uh, it is auto win a change. Well, no, There's no getting out of this one. <laughs> so, Accept <laughs> it's your right. apple pie. No, but I see your shoes are very clean. I see me, I didn't wear my favorite shoes. Do you know I've been passing? Like this. <laughs> First of all. But nonetheless, the RFEA grounds is an iconic uh, ground for rugby and an iconic tournament as well, the Safari Sevens tournament. So it's a privilege to be here. Yeah, Kolo. We have finally come to visit you. No, my mm. my, my biggest uh, highlight for this weekend is mm. the support from the Ugandan fans. They've uh, been actually very, 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 very vocal and passionate on Twitter and even on the grounds. Thank you so much for coming to me. Uh, Why did you guys stop us from using our Vuvuzelas? Because it actually uh, interferes with the... With the uh, Huta. With the and then again with the, the broadcast. Right? Yeah. yeah. But also yeah. the... Ruben, <laughs> Ruben, I must admit, mm. working with the Vuvuzelas in your ear is not a good experience. <laughs> So it's actually, yeah, it's but then, even there, Hoot, I noticed one thing. You guys sound the Hooter for like half a second. Yeah, yeah. Why? That's enough. And that's, it's supposed to blow it only for once. For seconds. someone that's on that pitch with adrenaline going on, you think they can hear something yeah, actually, that's half yeah, a second? Yeah, all the actually here and then uh, just that knowledge. Yeah. For seven, yeah. it's just a sh short and sharp. Oh. You uh, can hear it. For 15 mm. words, it's like a, it's like a whole. Siren. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can hear it. Okay. Um, they always say ladies first. Let's start with the ladies. The Uganda. Um, uh, uh, discussing the, the Uganda ladies. <laughs> 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 Later on, we are on our path. <laughs> anyway, um, someone is saying we need to cut sports. But again, if you know, you know. <laughs> People have to load up for later. Um, uh, we shall well, stop there. But yeah. anyway. The Lady Cranes have won the Safari Seven. Yeah. If we are being honest, and uh, Edwin and Ernest, I don't think that was our goal for this particular tournament. Of course, you go into a tournament wanting to win, but we are more on a developmental cycle. Developmental side with who? Our team is no, the only developmental side in this whole tournament was the Cubs. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. These ladies were actually pulled out from, from, from Kisumu mm. to prepare for this tournament. We all Both ladies from mm. uh, Akat and Lionesses were in Dubai, they were in South Africa, mm -hmm. and they were in Kisumu. Mm. And 
they actually followed it from Kisumu, teamed up with uh, about uh, four or five who are under 20 years yeah. to play in cups for the development side. Yeah. The, uh, the Lady Kings, they are nowhere near the You need side. to understand that the different parts or timelines in a, in a, in a rugby side. Uh, I, 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 yes, I think what Ruben meant was for Uganda's calendar, yeah. after the end of our seven season, we just started the 2023 2024 season. Yeah, the, This Lady Rugby Kings Sevens have been training for what, seven months or so? So it's not a oh, development. Oh. It's For tournaments like this. For the for the Africa Sevens, they've been training for the Africa Sevens for a long time. Yeah, it just ended, but please listen to me. Yeah. It just ended, and fortunately, we kept our Sevens season alive. I don't think you know what it means for us to finish track in Tunisia, because they would have been left with the Safari Sevens only. But next year, they have to play the Challenger Series. They have to play the Olympic Games repetition. And so, when what Ruben means by development, I think maybe you could have chosen. A different word, yeah. That's why you're, the, yes, that's why you're, yes. the, you're yeah. the professional commentator but, here. But what Ruben means is that this sets. <laughs> let me use the word benchmark for how we shall play the 2024 yeah, season. Use that word, yeah. benchmark, or probably say like you're using this tournament as a as a springboard. Yeah, for, for sure. the yeah. for the upcoming uh, challenge series and the probably Olympic. Uh, sure. And, and unlike unlike the the Kenya Lionesses, which I think now we could be at the, at the same level. Yeah. Uganda, if, if we weren't invited for the Safari 7, so you all we would be going knee deep, we would be going head first in the deep end at the Olympic Repechage, uh, at the Challenger, Challenger Series, Challenger. I think in Dubai next year, early next year. And no, I think one of the Challenger Series, uh, these are probably, I should have, but uh, I'll speak to some people from World Rugby and they're saying that probably one of the Challenger Series for both men and women will be heading. In Canada, that, would, that would be very good yeah. for us ah. to play at home. So Let's if we, the, if we, if we yeah, didn't yeah, play man. here, then we would have nothing to play. We would just come deep end against teams that have had more games. And then you so, troll us on social media. Of course so, have. Understandably, <laughs> understandably. So, like like Ruben mentioned, you, you've not come here. Of course you want to win. Yeah, You want to shoot as high as you can. Yeah? But the, the objective of the tournament is to is to test, I think. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's to test and to, and to see if your combinations are working and everything, and if probably also to justify as to why you have to follow out these players from going from the African side yeah. to the to focus on the front seven yeah. and see. Right now, probably Chelsea didn't really go back to Kampala. I'm going to his body and say, see, my gamble of getting these guys out of there. So, jump goal. It's actually that we are back to the achieve. Probably, yeah. Looking at probably the right yeah. is short term goal yeah. for a chill short of winning safari sevens, but yeah. a long term goal. Yeah. Probably you look at it I, I'm looking at it as different. Ladies rugby has very few games. Yeah. yeah. The whole year. Yeah. For very very team. So I don't understand why. I think letting those guys go to the super team so will have been very beneficial to them and very yeah. good for them. And I think that's where most people were a bit of uh, like disagreeing with how the decisions were made. You know, there was what that we were set up to fail, which I agree with to a certain point, but damned if they did, damned if they did it. Yeah. yeah. Damned if they did, damned if they did it. The gamble was taken to let's have sevens only, but it's it's still too early to see. It's just a skip. No, yeah, it's I don't understand. You know, I don't, think, I don't think it's time for ladies rugby to, to specialize. Even South Africa don't specialize. Yeah. You know, we've seen those... Uh, uh, Nadine Van Roos. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. that's number 10, Van Rosenberg or something. Yeah, yeah. yes, Van Rosenberg. But I think, I think perhaps um, when you also think about specializing, that ideally pushes you to want to create the, the depth for those teams. No, or to create the, 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 the pipelines that are going yeah, to bring in the like, players for those teams. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. you have to put yourself yeah, in an uncomfortable position to be able to find the solution. Yeah, so are so you yes. yeah. for two tournaments a year? Exactly. Don't worry, more will come. No, 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 I'm no. just looking yeah, at it right realistically. Yeah, realistically, realistically yeah. Yeah. Even for us, yeah. even for us, even for South Africa, even for Colombia, oh. for Spain and Kazakhstan. You know, as long as you're not taking part in the World, World Series, Series. You only have about two or three tournaments a year. Yeah. 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 For sevens. Yeah. But ideally, I think, you know, I do agree with you on that. But um, you look at, of course, the sevens and the fifteens having different um, coaches and just different management. They all have particular goals, I should say, that are maybe 
yeah, and also particular philosophies that are a bit different. I think so sometimes you're mixing. I think if you're switching someone from the 15th to the 7th, I think it's important to not work in silos. You're both yeah. working yes, for yes, the yes, development yes. of good interest. But these are two different codes of the game. Yeah, but you see, these are the same. same it's the same, same player. It's the same player. You're, you're, you're working what happens in the event that we have clashing, clashing uh, schedules? Then, then your hand is yeah. Let me give you an example. So why don't we, why don't when, we prepare when, for it when now? When Lioness has went to Tunisia for Africa 7, Right. There, are 20, there are 25 ladies in Dubai. In Dubai for the WXP. And none was like, they're actually training one of them here. They train for 15 and then now after the 15 are gone, the sevens remain, and then they do their own. Yeah. After, there are 12 ladies in, in, in uh, South Africa, in, in Tunisia. In Tunisia, yeah. So there are five ladies, uh, 25 ladies in Dubai. After Tunisia, five ladies from Tunisia flew to Dubai, the rest came back. And after Dubai, I have four more ladies flew from Nairobi to Kisoko to meet up with the no. So, no, you, go, you basically, you have like a pool of about 30 players, eh? top players, elite players, you can use the word elite players in the country. So this is the same players you're going to use for 15, the same players you're going to use for service, right? But because you have a very limited number of test matches, right? like for example, uh, Uganda, this year, how many test matches have you played? This is our first game, the Victoria Cup. The yes, end of the first game. game. So why are you denying this? For Kenya, they have played a number of test matches. Eight. This, they, they have played, played eight since yeah, the last game. But they are not enough. Yeah, yeah, well, it's definitely something that gives us a lot to it's think good about. Perspective from Colombia. Yeah. Um, but uh, just going back to the fact that in Uganda we've been having uh, a series of uh, negative, uh, let's say, PR towards the women after that very shocking loss in Kisumu. Um, but finally, we have some good news on the yeah. women's front. Yeah. So I, w I just want to pick from you, uh, Edwin and Ernest, um, your thoughts about the journey of the, the Sevens team, the ladies, the Lady Cranes, and how they, they featured in your perspective here at the Safari Sevens. Yeah, uh, we'll start with the Rugby Africa Sevens, how it went. Mm. And uh, we also go back a little bit to last year, where they finished fourth. They beat Kenya in the group game. Now you come to the 23, they lose to Kenya, and then they finish that. Mm. So it was negative, positive, positive, negative. Mm. And uh, on that concept, the ladies had, they had the time of their lives, uh, many videos of them having that experience in Tunisia. Uh, very many aspects of their play that came up that were concerning for many on here when we came to this tournament, particularly that chemistry thing. We, we need the ladies to play more and have as much chemistry as possible with themselves. Because once there is chemistry, all these things are, are seamless. The work goes, goes and shows. It shows that the ladies can play. Because a, a few moments on the pitch, you could see there was a little bit of uh, distracted uh, input. Uh, particularly when uh, in the final, you could see there's a lot of pressure oh, coming towards the tail end of the game. So uh, now coming to today, seeing how the ladies lost to the Lionesses, but they lost to Cubs, which was like, I think, the law of the tournament and then managed to bounce back beat the Cubs again and then beat the Lions was, was something that they, they really took uh, quite seriously. Very many players who, who, who caught the eyes of many. Uh, I liked very much my own Nassos in Star Wars, who were very, very uh, calculated and uh, she was always still in that ball. And then I think even the game against Cubs where she managed to nail a few conversions from the end. It was very, very amazing. Uh, obviously, uh, the first of all, I liked a lot in Tunisia. Lonna Molly. Uh, Sandra Molly. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, had that injury. And, uh, it was good to see her in the photo, the team photo, uh, later on during the day. As, and then also having the captain as well, just like to carry a lot, taking a few bodies, but also taking a few ball, ball hogging minutes. But it was a good shot of Uganda. I hope we can have. Uh, this as the stepping stone to make us go into the Challenger Series. Uh, usually at the time we have a time to like a week to relax, but I think they should continue. I think they need more conditioning as well. Because okay. they're going to face, they're going to face top, top competition. Yeah. So honest, um, maybe I know you want to have, you supplement yeah. and I want to let you do that, but also while you're at that, I want you just to also point out maybe your favorite players or the players that have impressed you the most from the Lady Queens and also, um, 
uh, favorite moments from the Lady Cranes, then perhaps you can also maybe point out someone else from any other team that you think has really caught your eye. I think to start with, my my favorite team this tournament have been the Cubs by country man. Mm. The Tropic Sevens as well have played well. They've been exciting on and off the field with that vibe and energy. Specifically about the Lady Rugby Cranes. Edwin has said lots of positives, I could just say thumbs up, but then there's a couple of negatives that really, really stuck out. Mm. I'm going to start with an addition about uh, Unity in Abula Life. First, like, I noticed her at the Toro 7, she really, really had a strong conversation with her. And she's a, she's a, she's a, she's a reserve girl. Uh, the attention is a bit new to her, but she has kept her head down and worked, met the national team as well, and kudos to Sarah Chino as well. Uh, a couple of players who have not been in the sevens for it, but like Kolo said, you need as much game time as you can on both ends. Yeah. However, Uganda have been training since, what, June? Ooh. Maybe May? For Africa sevens, and then maybe Safari sevens if it comes, and then maybe, you know, you can get some some tournaments in. I, for one, think that our performance was only good in the final. To be honest, we could have done much, much better in games prior. You look at, for example, the loss to Cubs. Yeah, yeah. was a result of mistakes that we have been doing for a very long time. Yeah. Even in the even in the Africa Sevens, you have a whole team that is playing as individuals. Everyone is going for glory. Everyone is trying to, you know, get the hit in, get the carry in. Yet, as you saw in the final, once you let the ball do the talking, once you let the ball do the work, you passing is so easy. These women have enough soft skills sometimes probably across the board they are more softly skilled than the men yeah. in the competition so we want to see that working yeah that and it's yeah if they yeah. came against the cups peace lekuru had three turnovers on her as she's trying to carry the team forward yes you may be the captain but you can't do it alone yeah. give you give a chance to other players to express themselves and i think that's why uganda usually forgets that we can play as a team. That loss against the Cubs woke them up, yeah, showed yeah, yeah. them that you can do it as a team. And I was speaking to Coach Onen and said that's one of the sticking points in that situation. That if we can do the easy stuff, we do not tear ourselves out. And so you have players working hard on defense when the ball has been, uh, like maybe the possession has turned over. But most importantly, you keep changing the point of attack. And that's how we're able to beat Kenya in the final. I think one important thing that has always uh, how about Uganda's performance in, in, in rugby in general is that we approach these games with uh, a bit of a back foot mentally. You know, we are playing against South Africa. You can already see when the players are in the tunnel that they've lost the game. Mm. Yeah, we are playing against Kenya. It's hot. Chris she plays with Japan. Yeah. Uh. Mentally, we are not there. But this this is one of the games that changes the tide for for some because Kutesa and Unity Namalala do not know how to lose to Kenya now. Yeah, they may have lost. They may have lost yesterday, but then now mentally, you break that barrier, that ceiling that has always had the advantage that they have always had. Yeah, and they lost in Tunisia. We've been losing to Kenya. The Kenyan every Kenyan we talk to is petty. But the truth of the matter is, Uganda has always lost. Before even the first whistle is blown, yeah. and games like this where they come out, they play as a unit, they play as a team. Everyone gives their utmost best. You saw Maimuna Nasa is strapped. Yeah, puts her shoulder in the strap, and goes around the neck. They strap her again. She's yeah. still going. I know. I'm so surprised, but I'm like, so, what, is, what, what are they holding? <laughs> there? I think, uh, so, a a uh, yeah. so it's it's those things. When you play as a unit, when Uganda plays as a team, good things happen. And Charles Onen will be walking back to RAU with the trophy. With with his team yeah, manager, yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah. So we've done this well. We'd like you to support us. And even then, there's there's many players out there. We saw Tina Akelo. She had been training with the sevens, but she scored Uganda's only points in Kisumu. Yeah. So there's those. Emily Lekuru is with the fifteens. You get the motivation to the rest of the team. Yeah. That despite the losses that we've been having, despite yeah. the short game time, if we like, there's an opportunity for us to not only play for the national team but to win while at it. And I think for me that's Ruben is all said and done. Says done. <laughs> <laughs> all said and done. I think that, like in summary, I'm happy that we've we've won. Of course, it's it feels good beating Kenya, especially oh, at for home. For me, I think I'm really happy here. That's but cool. most importantly, it keeps the rivalry alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I cool. don't like it when rugby mm. survives on banter. So we need to win the rugby <laughs> games. So that when Kolo is speaking to me, he says, "Congratulations, first, not ah." Uh, yeah, you're putting some Twitter accounts out of business. <laughs>
<laughs> Kolo, let's talk a little bit about uh, the lionesses and the cups. I know you are very, very happy with uh, ideally having two teams, yeah. uh, the development side and the big sides. Are you happy with what you, you saw over the two days? Yeah, for me, I'm really, uh, the same thing uh, I said, I'm really happy with what uh, I saw with Cubs. Oh. You know, some of these kids, they have, they have, I'll call them kids, kids are still kids. So some of them are actually 17 year olds. And, uh, no, they had to sign for them to, to play. They mm. just started playing like, like uh, two ago. They're still in high school, but they just down the road and see talent. And seeing them stepping on this pitch and putting them in the shield and actually winning the game against Uganda for me is the biggest thing for to do that. Of course, this, the senior team that was just lost to the, in the finals, but uh, if I can use the word that uh, it just used, it's a cautious word. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, I thought you were going to say we're here for the croissants. We're here for the croissants, <laughs> <laughs> no, mate. Like Anna Mnyak, the one that uh, scored a try, mm. uh, she's actually the seventh. Yeah. She's actually, I think, it's an two because she was sitting on each that play. And Kishif. She actually won, she was the top first scorer in the uh, Commonwealth uh, under 18 games in Barbados in July. Mm. Uh, so, and she's and then we had Clarice, and then we had uh, Valentine, some few other girls who just Fresh, yeah. Fresh, yeah. We just had them back about two years ago. You know. So when they, when they are checking these boxes, all it shows that actually our future is good. You know, of course, uh, Janet Okello is uh, in, in uh, Japan, oh. she's not going any, any younger. You know, um, Koki and Moretz. You know, but you look back, you see, like all the all the girls who are in South Africa this weekend, they can look back and see actually the features and probably think that they, you know they are, they are spaces in the team are not that that's that's secure. But having said that, I think I'm also happy for Charles Men, my personal friend. I've known him for over ten years. Of course, been referring to. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he was really stressed there when they lost against Cubs and wanted to kick all the bottles out of him. <laughs> when I saw him when born was there, and then the SNC again came and hugged me. Yeah. Coming to Kenya and getting a result is not the easiest thing. I'm really happy for these guys. So, all in all, I'm really happy for that uh, technical threat for um, Lady Prince. Congratulations to Honor and Yuti. Well done. Everyone has. And as uh, Anna says, let's try to let that be East Africa continue on the beach but it's about to rain ah. it's about to rain <laughs> the guy has made a compliment about it I know <laughs> wherever Poggy is he's probably going to get a heart attack Poggy will find it hard to say something nice about the rain anyway congratulations yeah. to the Uganda Lady Cranes um, for that very very big win one that I dearly like Anna said might change the tides for many of these girls and how they approach the game but now, let's talk about the men before we, we wrap this up. Yeah. Uh, of course, the Shuja one. And okay. In, let me also not be petty. Congratulations <laughs> to Congratulations. Ken, the Kenya Shuja. Oh. I, I have to say, I was very impressed by. You know, I mean, people are going to talk about the, the attack. Yeah. The defense, my lord. But that's what one has the uh, defense the ticket, ticket was crazy. Yeah, yeah, the defense, defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, against yeah. Samurai. You're leading by 19. You probably a few minutes to go. You could maybe be a bit lax and maybe letting it try, but soon, so won't affect you that much. These guys were defending like their lives depended on it. It was amazing to watch. You see, anyway, I don't know what we have got to do, but yeah. so let's just talk a little bit about it from a Ugandan perspective. Unfortunately, we lost to Samurai in the semis. There is something that didn't sit right with you, and I don't know if Anis is going to agree. <laughs> let's start from there. Let's, 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 let's start from there. We, we, we wait for Kolo because yeah. I had a discussion with Kolo about it. And uh, okay, while we wait for Kolo, let's just Kolo was just the head. Kolo was the head at that technical that technical zone. He's yeah. the guy who's making those communications, okay. and so he is probably aware of what happened. I thought, I think, I still think, I I believe that. Uh, the communication between the referees and the players and the, the sounding of the hotel is a confusion. And the decision, the, the decision that the referee made as the true as the sole judge of Bruce and Fakte, mm -hmm. okay. it, it might, have, yeah. it might yeah. not have been the correct decision. But really? Kono believes uh, that 
And as he returns, uh, he had something to talk to. Yeah. And as Kolo returns, me, I strongly believe. Yeah. Kolo, welcome back. So Kolo I, making I, plans I, for the night. Yeah. <laughs> I strongly believe. Just yeah. something else and business over there. I strongly believe yeah. that. And we had this discussion, Kolo, that when you score the try, there's different schools of thought about that. When you score a try, before the Huta goes, and the Huta goes after you score the try, you allow to take the conversion. Yes, there, yeah? there is. And yeah. then, game in Asia. Yeah. yeah? No, now, and that's where we differ. There is, if a hunter goes in between a con uh, um, the try and the conversion, you have to take a kick off. Really? Yes. Remember when we won the ticket to Olympics in 2015? Zimbabwe scored, eh? uh, and then the hunter went. They hit, and then they had to take. Okay, uh, is, there, is, there an option, is there an option that the referees watch, he still had time, regardless no, of where no, the no, no, was? No. That's actually according to the law. Yeah. You have to take a restart. You have I to take did, a I do not have the information on my hands now, but like yeah, I said, I will, yeah, will, 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 will check as, as, I, as I told you, I'm going to, come, I'm going to send you actually that, uh, that law, but you have to take a restart. But if I can just go back to that game, I think yeah. tactically again, mm, it wasn't the best decision to keep the game. Because you're kicking the, you have you're giving them possession, and then now you have to chase, but they have they they, they actually have their line. But if you kick shots, means that it's contestable. You can win. <laughs> you contest in the air and no kick on. I think it's if it's you know the game is done. The game that. is done. What about what about the aspect? Sorry to take you back, but the aspect of saying that. Uh, on kickoff or the restart, kick it directly out. That's what I'm saying. As long as it bounces, as long as it bounces, it bounces yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's what everyone was going for. It's just that as long it bounces as yeah, out the vibe yeah. and stay But ball. if it goes straight out, then they'll have a uh, free kick. Yeah. Yeah. Free, 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 free kick. Free kick. Yeah. Yeah. The ball just bounced and failed to go As long out. as it bounces in the pitch. I, think I spoke to... Coach Tony was smiling and laughing. But I know deep in his heart, eh? No. I know it hurt him. No, no actually, yeah. even Tony. So after that, he told you... Uh, he told, uh, when the after the after the kick, you know, that, uh, just go, yeah. let's go deep. And then, so I'm sorry, 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 i am sorry i am sorry i am sorry i am i think the Uganda team, after that kick, they, they all ran. Yeah, the defense was poor yeah. in that very And then situation. they left like three man overlap. And Marcos Suno was there alone. Yes. He's a debutant. Yeah. They're alone. The three. Very expensive. That's number nine. That's uh, looked at him in eyes. I think he smelled fear. Marcos Suno is a winner. Speak, but, no, but, but uh, yeah, but yeah, remember that guy, well. that guy is the one who actually caught up with uh, Odongo. Yeah, yeah. No, I, what I wanted to say mm. is that uh, when, when the kickoff was made, I think also the black head chase was not as good. Yeah, yes, the difference is either, 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 either it was a either it was a camera angle or because the person you see in the first frame when they when the samurai guy got the ball was at reader. And who is the last guy you see trying to chase to stop the drive? As you see, and again, so you know, just the cover, yeah. and yeah. Atuna had just come back on it, yeah, because it been substituted, yeah, the and then after that, it came, it came back on, yeah. So it's, it's just coming back on, it's still no, and it's still at the energy. Still we still need all our guests at that call. That, that cool. yeah. You know, you can also grip of uh, referee's decisions, you play what's in front of you, yeah. well, maybe Coach Tolis smile. Even as he's trying to mask the pain and all, was in that Uganda have had the best finish at the Safari Seven ever. We've never made a make up. Actually, I, I, I actually watched that in Safari Seven since 2004, and I think this is the best Uganda team that has ever been there, apart from the one that was at um, uh, Kasarani a few years ago yeah. in 2016, when it was also Africa Seven, and when we think that they were the second team. Right? Remember the, the captain who went to. The US, Alfred, uh, yes. no, Alfred, yeah. Dijik, Alfred, Dijik, 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 South Africa, Dijik. 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 that's the one that uh, disappeared in France. Although, <laughs> 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 I think that's it, it was just a, it was, was, was just a, it was 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 I think that's, that, I think Aaron and, Aaron was a, and yeah. Aaron and, and, and Joseph, 
Aaron and, and uh, oh, the two captains, there. Aaron and Casito, and Casito made their debuts in 2015, I think. Uh, so, I, one I, I think he's one of the best. best. And I think for the first time, I must admit that Uganda are playing very good rugby in sevens. They are strong, they are big. Master is playing good rugby, actually, he's playing good rugby. Yeah, so anyway, um, we have been applauding the work that the Uganda Sevens have been doing. Um, about the, the debutants, of course, we did not bring the typical Uganda Sevens team that we normally would have brought. But who oh, was missing? A lot of players were missing. Uh, apart, from me, apart from me and who was missing? Timothy, with the Timothy, Timothy has already left this the center for us. Who? No, Timothy has already left. Philip Okora. No, Philip is is hard. Yeah, he's 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 you saw what he was doing in Zimbabwe. He couldn't even run. Anyway, this is the same mentality that we have with uh, yeah. the women. That it is we're setting a benchmark for a 2024 yeah. season. And this, this, is is very, no, this is a very good. This team. is your best team, apart from here, and probably because of work. Yeah. And who is who? Because I don't, I don't, I don't count uh, Philip as a part of it. Because you no, know, he comes in and out. Yeah. Just one of the people that's uh, in the in the setup who wakes up in the morning. Go to wherever they train. Yeah, six a.m. Yeah, six yeah. We did. We did have a number of, of players who were given a shot this this weekend. Uh, Roy Kizito, um, Roy Marco good. Suna. Roy is good. Tell me about your thoughts when it comes to the debutants. Man, in and Uganda, some of maybe the fringe players that have also been given a chance. Man, in Uganda, people move on so quickly. Man, including the coaches. So if you get your chance, like Roy Kizito, run yeah. away with it. Yes, six and tries. Literally. Six Makes tries. So well. and, and remember, he was here for Kabebe Yeah, remember? he was here with the. So with I the spoke to him yesterday. I said, I know, I know my way around here, uh, and he has shown the, you know, the, the fruits of the labor that he has put in. Uh, Marco Suno, on the other hand, didn't get much game time. Yeah. Maybe the options that he's coming on is that uh, as a forward. Yeah. So he's not going to shine that much to so get much game time because of the options that Uganda has. But also, there's a number of other players that are making their debuts here at the Safari Sevens. Davis Shima was not as exciting. Aaron took care. Came on really, really good rugby. I think Timothy Mugisha is here at age 21, no? no. Maybe, maybe not Alex Aturinda. Yeah. It's so, yeah. yeah. It's... <laughs> Who will take the... the For me, was best the I think it was... Uh, 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 he dropped those Germans like the, uh, the like I know, eh? like German bread. Eh? <laughs> that the boy has really made the news this week. From of course his transfer from Impis to Pirates, <laughs> oh, and then uh, yeah, <laughs> and then now his display. I mean, for a debutant, that was so so amazing. But anyway, as we close this, I want to know from uh, the Shuja, winning Safari Sevens. The, what next is in store for of them? Of course, <laughs> it's very simple for mm -hmm. us. Uh -huh. It's very simple for us. We have to get back to our blog. Mm. So, <laughs> so Bling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So Bling, the head coach, Kevin Ombua, uh, knows exactly what's supposed to be. And you see playing Germany, playing Uganda. Those are the teams that actually take part in the series. Yeah. And uh, probably we're not so familiar with Chinese series, so... <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> so we had to play yeah. them here to know how it is down there. So if you got a German confirm, the other teams did, but it was those three. Yeah, it was very important. Yeah. That was very, teams, yeah. It was very important for Uganda and Germany. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that... That there will be different yeah. parts in the challenge. Yeah. 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 Kevin Mambua is... is cool up well. Of course not. Ah, yeah, yeah. so... Uh, so, uh, so <laughs> I think his, his goals just to, you know, we have to go to Challenger Series and actually our biggest uh, opponent in Challenger Series. I think it's worldwide because I don't think uh, you guys in Germany will sort yourselves out at some point, <laughs> as usual, at some point. We'll bookmark this. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep this one receipt. One day is Kenya, so we'll eat their <laughs> humble pie. One day, one day. For how long? Since 1955 on the first day. Kolo, I definitely mentioned that uh, one of the people that is happiest with uh, Kevin Mabua is uh, Mama Rainbow. Yeah, of course, so they are very good about You used to say, of course, they're not playing cards. Inside, and they are all they've been, you know, have been in Mamba since playing. So, Big Number has been in Mamba since when they, uh, I think if you listen to that uh, podcast, uh, probably when you say when they after the Bulins, the army side broke up, oh. they went to Mamba in 2004, so it's been there. So, basically, here, yeah, the same way you are warriors, 
But she wants, you know, like he's a Mwamba friend, you know, so him, mm. uh, you know, he's a Mwango. He is even Zing, you know, when Zing, I do get to know that, right, he texted me. You know, he, he did want to shout, but, you know, he actually played a very big role in Zing's performance. That's a, uh, that's a, that's a, Mwamba Rengo in his zone. So he, he was, she was very proud of uh, I'm, I'm happy for, of course, I'm a KCB fan, but my friends who are the Mwaba. Be clear, these days when you say KCB fan, KCB Cops. How is it, man? Uh, KCB of Ruaraka. Oh. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of KCB, but Kolo, my um, my other friends, especially it is like supposed to be supporting uh, I'm happy that Kevin Wambo is getting his playing in gold. Two out of two, so it's yeah, yeah he is. And the one thing probably that I should talk about him is that just like probably both him, he's one he's a coach that is obsessed with data, obsessed with numbers. It's not that coach that probably is not the motivator coach. He actually names his board according to numbers. Now probably you in trainings you don't do you don't you are a winner, you're supposed to cover X number of meters. Mm. You're a center, you're supposed to do this and this. And if you don't, if, if you notice, actually plays two tens in sevens. Mm. He's not a mm. he's, he's a very modern type of coach. And I should also post that he actually has spent six months in the same as Hey! Yes, yeah. Yeah. I, can I think easy. Uganda needs to have a lot more of those clinics as well. There's no Jigos in blue boots. Look at it this way. <laughs> uh, Kenya qualified for the Olympics. Hopefully, the Challenger 7 Series tournament are in enough for you to do well there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they are, they are going to fail and then they'll increase the pool and then they'll only stick it. The way the Challenger Series yeah. is made is in such a way that there's, a, there's a much rugby out of Tier 1. Mm. So they put the Challenger Series as a get some game time because if you come to the top then the it's like it's being get kept it's actually it's 12 teams throughout the season yeah so they have like locked 12 teams so yeah they, they, so they are no longer invited in, which yeah. i think but, that first. Things, things that yeah. sure. but the challenger series is in such a way that you have to qualify every year every year you have to qualify every year so okay. yeah. because then that means that, that if they say that if you do not qualify every year it's it because it means that Uganda and Kenya will always go for the Challenger Series. Yeah. You look about uh, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. If, if, you, if, you, if you say the top two from Africa, then you, you're looking at uh, regulation and promotion from down here. It yes. means that Uganda and Kenya, who can never finish at the bottom of the Challenger Series, the bar is very high here. Yeah. We will never get up to the Challenger Series. But same as men and women, you need to stay active in your regional competitions, yes. Oceania, Asia, South America, yeah. I Africa. Think even the same thing that in and out with WX side P3. No, the leg first now. Um, Kenya has to come back to Africa and play a qualifier to go back for the WX P3 yeah. next year. Yeah. But now the, what they are doing is that now Kenya and uh, I think Uganda. No, Uganda will. I'm not sure about Uganda, but what I know is that Kenya, because now South Africa will be made WX Yeah. Right? So Kenya. Uganda and probably Madagascar have to play uh, at a uh, qualifier oh, yeah. oh, next year to qualify for WXP3. Yeah. So it's, it's, you have for you to go back yeah. to the global yeah. many barriers. Like they said, uh, Coach Paul but mentioned it at yeah. the start that for him he's focusing on the individual attributes, how many meters are you gaining as a winger, carries yeah. and what. You mentioned the tough processes yeah. and I think in summary with all these tournaments that are coming up and the competitions that you need to work hard for the processes have to be like the objective has to be at the processes you yes. get the processes right you keep moving forward you don't get the processes right you're, you're trying to work in quicksand the harder you work the deeper you sink Edwin your reflections as we close this Safari 7s how has it been uh, as an event. Whenever I beat Germany, I get happy. Apart from the women. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I beat Germany, I'm happy. Uh, so, uh, the women, it was good to see them bounce back Ooh. from those two losses. Uh, took a lot of uh, uh, 
social media against the news, right? Not that they were only listen to what they were saying, but it's good they, they changed. And uh, Navi ends, but that's what Chapel is all about. They managed to win the university. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, so yeah, they it's, yeah. it's a rare feeling. <laughs> <laughs> they talk to each other direct. <laughs> yeah, then um, I think the organization here as well, very nice, uh, good setups. Um, I think the fan talk vibe is still there. I have to go and check the kids out in the match as well. Mm. So then they also explore the after and then also catch on by the They explore the nightlife. Uh, Kid House was nice. I'm trying to see where Oyster is. It Oyster? Oh, whatever. We'll figure that out. <laughs> anyway. It's me um, staying here, man. Yeah, yeah there's actually there's a fun park yeah. happening here. Of course, for those that are seeing the background, um, this is the RFU EA grounds here in Gogroot. Um, we have been talking about uh, the Safari 7s. So we are happy with how Uganda has performed. He's happy with how they should have performed. I'm not and sure. And cubs. And the cubs. I'm a big, I'm a big supporter of women rugby. And these cubs. Actually, I, I, I spend a lot of mm. time with uh, women rugby. Mm. And this doing whatever, I seeing whatever they're doing. Yeah, but hello, Kenya has really, really been an experience from the time we jetted in. Um, the people, the interactions, apart from the food without the soup, uh, we can deal with that. But uh, we have to go for the after party. Yeah. Well, well, actually, we have to. Well, actually, we're going to put some did food you, here, but you, we couldn't afford to not have soup here, so we just let it go. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, also to just take notes, look out for our vlogs, our rugby road trip vlogs that are going to be coming out. We have one for Kisumu that's coming out. And also, now, oh yeah, I did tell this story earlier on that uh, my first experience of Nairobi was my cab driver, I give him money, he gives me back, you know, I give him money and then I, I wait for my change and he's like, oh, this is my tip. He doesn't ask, he tells, he informs me and then he proceeds to get my my luggage out of the car and he drives away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and he, make, and he spent the night at a lodging. I, I slept in Dagoreti. <laughs> I have friends in Kenya who have never been to Dagoreti. I will go there before then. Hey, Nairobi this year. <laughs> Thank you for being part of the podcast uh, review of the software. Fiery Sevens, we shall see you guys later. Cheers. <laughs> when I slept in the man. <laughs>